The 2001 MotoGP season was one of the closest fought for several years. It became a battle between two Italians. The prize, the last ever pure 500cc world title before the introduction of four-stroke 990cc bikes in 2002. Valentino Rossi was widely tipped for the title, having been runner-up in 2000. Already a world champion in both 125 and 250cc classes, he was looking to win his third title in six years. His rival, the Roman Emperor Max Biaggi, a former 250cc champion, was looking for an elusive title in the Premier class. Britain was to be represented too. Chris Walker had a ride on what promised to be a competitive Honda NSR V4. And 18-year-old Liam Haslam was to be his teammate on the less powerful Honda V-Twin. A fashionable restaurant in London's St James's was perhaps an unlikely place to find the world champion. Certainly, the other diners seemed unaware of the identity of the man at the corner table. We snatched some time between courses and phone calls to ask the doctor about his title-winning season. Valentino, first, um, before the season started, what were you hoping for? Were you hoping to become world champion? Were you expecting to become world champion? Uh, during the, the winter, we make uh, a very big, very good work because uh, uh, the new the new bike arrived in uh, in October of 2000, and uh, it's possible to start to try very early. I know we have the, the potential for for try to win uh, because at the debut of the 500, I finished second place, and for sure with more experience and with the new bike, it's possible also win. But uh, you never know. I know the, the level of the team of the bike and of the rider is, is good for try to win. Okay, to so the first race, Suzuka, and that was a, a big battle between you and Biaggi. Yes, the first race was uh, very exciting. Uh, I, I like Suzuka very much because it's a very it's technical and hard track. Uh, but uh, in the past, I never, have, I never had uh, lucky. Uh, crash with the one to five, uh, never finish in the top ten. The start was not, not very good. Uh, start uh, eight or nine place, and after uh, the hard battle with uh, with all the riders, all the other riders, especially with Biaggi, and uh, also touch uh, two or three times, uh, and uh, win the first Grand Prix of the season is uh, always a uh, big emotion. And really, we're getting on to the horsepower section of the circuit now. McCoy lights up that back tyre as he gets the gas on hard, ready for this long run up the straight. Valentino Rossi, Gary McCoy, Norik Arbe closing on Max Biaggi as we follow the leader. That was a challenge by Norik Arbe on Max Biaggi. It is Valentino Rossi, though, who's going to win it. Max Biaggi is still in third place, close behind Gary McCoy. He had Norik Arbe breathing over his shoulder. Rossi looks round to see where they are, and the answer is they're right behind because it has closed up in the dying moments of this race. Though it is Valentino Rossi who wins the first 500 race of 2001 ahead of Gary McCoy and Max Biaggi. So it was first blood to Rossi. The first win of the season was also Honda's 500th Grand Prix victory. And despite Chris Walker's early exit, Leon Haslam provided some good news for the Shell Advance team. He collected three points for a 12th place finish, becoming the youngest rider ever to score 500cc World Championship points. The talking point of the race, though, was undoubtedly the clash between Rossi and Biaggi. Both riders were warned about their future conduct. Uh, all speak about uh, me and Biaggi because uh, already in the past we are not a uh, very good friend, you know. Uh, the problem in Suzuka is uh, Biaggi make uh, uh, dirt and very dangerous uh, movement because he see me uh, and he want to push me outside. And at that point we make uh, 220 kilometers per hour, so uh, I'm very scared because you go on the grass, and very high speed, you never know what's happened. And uh, when I overtake him after one lap, I make the, the sign only because I, um, I, I was very scared, you know? Like uh, on, on, the, on the highway when, uh, no? is, uh, I think is normal. 
Round two was held at the South African circuit of Welcome near Johannesburg. Despite suffering an injury to his shoulder when he fell in Japan, Chris Walker was confident of better things, perhaps too confident. The NSR was proving to be quite a handful, and Chris fell again in qualifying and was back in 16th place on the grid. He finished 15th, scoring a single point, but at least his campaign was underway. There was no stopping Rossi, though. Fastest in qualifying, he carried that form into the race. Running nearly half a second a lap faster than his rivals, he made it two wins from two races. Welcome, the, the, the race was very different because uh, basically I, I fight only with Capirossi. Because uh, me, me and Capirossi in Welcome have had uh, a different rhythm than the other. Have half a second for a lap faster. And uh, I make uh, the last three laps, three new records, and Capirossi come with me, so very difficult, but at the end, uh, is not able to overtake me. And Biaggi was back in eighth place, I think. For sure, the, the, um, the, f the mental condition of Biaggi about uh, after Suzuka, maybe is uh, not at 100% in, uh, in uh, South Africa. So you think that Suzuka maybe set him backwards? I think, Psychologically? Yes. And things didn't get any better for the Morbury Yamaha team at Haref two weeks later. Biaggi's teammate Carlos Checker made an early bid for crash of the season with a spectacular high side. Biaggi was also off the pace. He started from the second row and could only finish 11th, leaving Rossi to battle out the lead with Norik Abe. It always looked like a mismatch and the doctor made it three out of three. It was beginning to look like a one-horse race. For me, it was uh, a big surprise because uh, usually I'm not very fast at the beginning of the year. But uh, this year I arrived at the first race in uh, perfect shape and uh, it's a big surprise for me. But after the, the first three races, win uh, in a row uh, is very good, but also is bad because already all start to say the, the championship is finished uh, because uh, it's Rossi and the Honda are uh, too fast, uh, blah, blah, blah. And this is not, uh, not good. Is that a problem for you when people say that? You have to think, yes. no, that's not true. Yes, it's a big problem because uh, you know it's not like this. I have uh, 16 races and uh, especially with the 500 is very hard. Uh, go very fast during all the races. Uh, for sure, during the season you have a, a, a little period, a period of crisis, you know? because uh, make the setting of the, the, the 500 is always difficult. I wait for this, but already all the people say, ah, already we, the championship is closed. People work inside, like mechanics, like Jerry, and, uh, like all my team know the situation and know is uh, have 13 races to the end and uh, all uh, is possible happens, you know? How important is Jerry Burgess to the team and to your performance? And Jerry is very important. Uh, also at the beginning give me a big end. I think uh, for, for me uh, is important, uh, yes, under the point of tec technical view, like uh, setting and uh, all because he's very good, but also uh, because he gives me very much quiet, because he's, he's always very quiet. I, I work in the past only with the Italian teams. And uh, in the Italian teams, the, the situation is a little bit different. Uh, all uh, feel more uh, the, the race, are more uh, aggressive, more uh, nervous. With Jeremy, is uh, very, always very quiet. And very, very cool. And so this is, this is good for a rider. So after three rounds, Rossi led the championship by 31 points from Abe whilst Max Biaggi was six, 46 points behind. Le Mans was the setting for the next race, the French Grand Prix, and there was perhaps a glimmer of hope for Rossi's rivals. I don't like the track. Uh, Le Mans is one of the worst track uh, in the championship for me, because uh, it's not technical, not very, very slow, always a stop, restart, stop, restart. I don't like Le Mans. Gary McCoy would probably agree with that assessment after this crash on the opening day of qualifying. 
He broke the scaphoid bone in his wrist. It was an injury that was to sideline him for most of the first half of the season. After a promising start to his MotoGP career, Leandro